This screencast will introduce you to the nervous system, which may be found in Chapter 7 of your textbook. This screencast was designed to help you achieve the following objectives. List the key strategies your instructor feels are necessary for successfully learning and understanding the nervous system. Describe the overall function of the nervous system. Describe the structural organization of the nervous system. Describe the functional organization of the nervous system. Before we go any further, I just want to mention that students often find gaining a good understanding of the nervous system challenging. So to help you overcome these challenges, here are a few key strategies that I would like for you to use. First, make sure that you read the associated pages in your textbook prior to viewing each screencast. Make sure that you have a reasonable understanding of the content of a screencast before moving on to the next screencast. And this is because the information on the nervous system builds upon previous information. It will be very difficult for you to understand a subsequent screencast if you don't have a basic understanding of the previous screencast. Third, if you have questions or if you're having trouble understanding the content of a screencast, seek help as soon as possible, either from another student or from your instructor. Do not allow questions you have to go unanswered. This is because, again, understanding information presented in later screencasts will require a basic understanding of information presented in previous screencasts. If you move on to new screencasts without understanding prior screencasts, the information can snowball on you very quickly and you can be very, become very confused and very frustrated. So please make sure you understand a screencast before moving on to the next screencast. This figure from your book basically summarizes the functions of the nervous system. The, every component of the nervous system is involved in one or more of these activities. Sensory reception, integration, or sending motor output out to an effector. So, what is sensory input? Sensory input is gathering information, detecting stimuli or changes, and then communicating information about the, those changes to integration center. There are sensory receptors in your skin, in your joints, inside your body. They detect stimuli or changes, and they send information about those changes as sensory input to an integration center. After receiving that information, the integration center, usually the brain and the spinal cord, in process and interpret that information. What do, do those changes mean? After processing and interpreting that sensory input, the integration center then decides whether or not an action is appropriate. And if the, nervous, the integration center decides and the action needs to be taken, commands are sent out as motor output to an effector. An effector is nothing more than muscles and glands, if you remember from our discussion on homeostasis and homeostatic mechanism. The nervous system controls the other 10 organ systems by controlling the muscles and glands in those organ systems. So these are the three activities that every component of the nervous system is involved in. It's involved in one or more of these activities. So keep this in mind as we proceed through the nervous system. Structurally, 
the nervous system is divided into the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Here we're dividing the nervous system according to the location of structures. When you think of the central nervous system, I want you to think brain and spinal cord, brain and spinal cord, and brain and spinal cord. The central nervous system only includes the brain and the spinal cord, nothing else. All other components of the nervous system are part of the peripheral nervous system. So the cranial nerves that extend from the brain, the spinal nerves that extend from the spinal cord, as well as the peripheral nerves that extend into our arms and legs, all of those structures are part of the peripheral nervous system. If it's not specifically part of the brain or part of the spinal cord, it is part of the peripheral nervous system. I want to take a moment and relate the structural classification of the nervous system to this figure that I use to discuss the functions of the nervous system. Again, the central nervous system only includes the brain and spinal cord where integration occurs. We talked about how you have sensory receptors that detect stimuli and then that sensory input is sent to the integration center. Both the sensory receptors and the nerve fibers that carry that sensory input are in the peripheral nervous system outside the brain and spinal cord. Likewise, the nerve fibers that carry the motor output out to the effectors are also in the peripheral nervous system. Now that we have talked about how components of the nervous system can be classified structurally, let's talk about how they can also be classified functionally by what they do. Receptors that detect stimuli and the nerve fibers that send information about that stimuli to the integration center are part of the sensory or afferent division. You have receptors in your skin, in your joints, inside your visceral organs that detect changes and send information about those changes to your brain and spinal cord. They are part of your sensory division. We can further subdivide the sensory division into the somatic sensory and the visceral sensory, sometimes referred to as the autonomic sensory. Well, what is the difference? Well, when you think of the word somatic, I want you to think of things that you are going to consciously uh, be aware of in terms of sensation and you're going to take voluntary action. Receptors in your skin that detect pain and uh, temperature changes outside the body or when someone touches you, those are part of the somatic sensory division. Also, receptors in your joints that detect movement of your, those joints, those are part of the somatic sensory division. These receptors typically are going to detect stimuli that you're going to be consciously aware of and you're going to consciously make decisions. Like if you touch something that's a little warm, you're going to make a decision whether to move toward it or away from it, or a little cold or something somewhat painful, right? You're going to make conscious decisions. So that's what I like to think of when I, when I think of the somatic sensory. What about the visceral sensory? Well, the visceral sensory division will include those receptors that are inside the body in your visceral organs for Example, if there's a change in pH in your stomach, that's going to be detected by receptors in your stomach. And sensory input is going to be sent to your brain, and your brain is going to respond. But you're not going to really be aware of those changes, and you're not going to be involved in the response by your nervous system.
okay so somatic sensory you are aware of the receptors are in your skin and joints visceral sensory divisions detecting stimuli but that typically those, those receptors are in your visceral organs could also be in blood vessels and you're not aware of them both are detecting stimuli and sending information about that stimuli as sensory input to an integration center nerve fibers that send motor output out to effectors are part of the motor or efferent division these are nerve fibers that are sending the motor output out to effectors muscles and glands and like the sensory division they are divided into two subdivisions nerve fibers that are sending motor output out to your skeletal muscles those are effectors that you have conscious control of they are part of the somatic motor division the nerve fibers that are sending motor output out to smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and glands, effectors that you have no conscious control of, they are part of the autonomic motor division. And later on, you'll learn that the autonomic nervous division, or autonomic motor division rather, is subdivided into sympathetic and parasympathetic. But don't worry about that at this point. I am now going to summarize what we just learned about the structural and functional organization of the nervous system. You will want to be able to explain this figure from your book as I am going to within a few days. In my opinion, it is difficult to understand, truly understand how the nervous system works if you don't have an understanding of the organization of the nervous system. So make it a goal of yours within the next couple of days to be able to explain the structural and functional organization of the nervous system using this figure as I'm about to now. The nervous system can be divided structurally into the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. When you think of central nervous system, think brain and spinal cord, brain and spinal cord, brain and spinal cord. Anything other than the brain and spinal cord is the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system is involved in two functional actions or processes, sensory input or motor output. Sensory input shown here on the left is involved in detecting stimuli or changes and then sending information through nerve fibers about that sensory input to the central nervous system. Some of those Sensory receptors that detect stimuli are in the skin and joints. They and the nerve fibers that send sensory input from those receptors are in the somatic sensory division. Some of those receptors are in visceral organs like your lungs or your stomach or small intestine. They and the nerve fibers that send sensory input from those receptors are part of the visceral somatic division. Sensory input is sent to the central nervous system and that is where integration occurs. Integration is processing and making sense of the sensory input. In response to integrating and processing that sensory input, Commands are sent out as motor output through motor fibers out to an effector. And effectors are basically muscles and glands. If the effectors are skeletal muscle, then the, then the motor output is sent through 
motor fibers that are part of the somatic efferent or somatic motor division. On the other hand, if the motor output is sent out to involuntary effectors like cardiac muscles, smooth muscles, glands, effectors that you have no conscious control of, they are part of the autonomic motor division. And later on, not now, but later on, you will learn that the autonomic division is subdivided into the parasympathetic and the sympathetic divisions. Be able to explain this figure as I just did in the next few days, and it will really help you understand all the other components of the nervous system that we'll be covering. Now let's review the objectives the screencast was designed to help you achieve. List the key strategies your instructor feels are necessary for successfully learning and understanding the nervous system. Describe the overall function of the nervous system. Describe the structural organization of the nervous system. Describe the functional organization of the nervous system. The next screencast will discuss nervous tissue.